Dark Tide has arrived and it's time to jump into the action. But where do you start and what class is right for you? Hey there friends, it's Kodiak here. Welcome to Legacy Gaming. Today we're taking a look at the Ogryn Skullbreaker, breaking it down and helping you determine if it's the class for you. Now there's two layers to how classes work in this game. The macro level is called the archetype. There are four currently in the game. You've got the veteran, a battle-hardened soldier of the Astra Militarum, the zealot, a steadfast loyal subject of the God Emperor, the ogren, large powerful brutes that are often exploited and utilized for their incredible strength, and the psychers consider witches throughout the Imperium because of their connection to the Immaterium. These four archetypes define the general characteristics of each class, loosely defining how the character will play, but it's really the second layer that determines how a class performs in the moment-to-moment -moment action. And that, my friends, is why you're here. So with that basic knowledge out of the way, let's dive in. If you're looking for a big, meaty shield that stands on the front lines, squashing enemies left and right, look no further than the Ogryn Skullbreaker. I don't think anyone ever doubted that the first Ogryn class would be melee-focused, but it's how much Fat Shark leans into this idea of an Ogryn frontline that really cements the idea. The class is designed with one thing in mind, how to be the most effective frontline out there. And while other classes like the Zealot Preacher have the ability to dance in and around short to mid range as needed, to be an effective Ogryn Skullbreaker, you have to live right on the edge of chaos and destruction. Upon loading in, a Skullbreaker will be equipped with a club, fitting, and a thumper shotgun. It's the latter that's a bit interesting as this starting shotgun is a one pump wonder, dealing high damage, but only when used in extreme close range. The reload time is also longer than one might expect, which makes it more of a supporting player to the main star of the show, the Skullbreaker's melee attacks. To complement this loadout is the Ogryn's tactical item, the grenade box. This is a brilliantly hilarious item as the Ogryn literally chucks an entire box of grenades at his enemy. Funny thing is, while it deals an insane amount of single target damage, it doesn't actually explode, so this box acts more like a sniper projectile than anything else. If you think about it though, this makes a lot of sense. This tactical item gives the Ogryn the ability to deal some serious damage to elite enemies, foes they'll most likely be going toe to toe with anyways. It's an on-demand nuke, but with reward comes risk. This tactical is a single projectile, so if you miss, you get nothing. No damage, no explosion, no AOE, nothing. It's a great item, but one that requires a bit of skill to use effectively. For a frontline meat shield, the Ogryn Skullbreaker has passive buffs you'd pretty much expect. Excessive force gives the player a 25% increase to stagger strength for all melee attacks. That means when hitting enemies, they'll be knocked back just a bit further than any other class. Loyal Protector makes the Ogryn a Revive King. When reviving or assisting allies, a Skullbreaker can't be interrupted. And the final passive, Thick Skin, gives the player a 20% toughness damage reduction, as well as a flat 20% damage reduction from all sources. If the Skullbreaker didn't scream frontline tank before, it sure should now. Let's also factor in the class's aura, Intimidating Presence, which increases the heavy melee attack damage of allies by 10% so long as they're in coherency range. I'll be frank, I'm not wild about the Sora. It definitely brings less to the table than the other classes. Heavy melee attacks are a bit niche and most of the time are only used when absolutely necessary to deal with specific enemies. So for this aura to only impact the damage of those attacks, is a bit cheap when you consider some of the other auras in the game which have much broader implications. Where the aura does matter though is in the higher difficulties when you'll be facing many more armored enemies. It's got a place in the game, that's for sure, but it's more specific to the situation. The Skullbreaker's class ability is Bull Rush. This is kind of like the Zealot Preacher's Charge, but also not. It's mainly used as a way to disrupt a massive horde of enemies. When activated, the Skullbreaker charges forward, knocking back all enemies it hits. At the end of the charge, the player also has increased movement and attack speed. It can be used as both an offensive and defensive tool, but its main use is to really create some sort of disruption when things are getting hairy. The ability can also be used to push enemies off of ledges, careening them to their death. There are a lot of enemies in Darktide, and having a way to give your team some breathing room is something you shouldn't underestimate, which is why this ability is nice to have, plus the buffs are nice too. As you might expect, the Skullbreaker has a lot of skills that increase their resilience on the battlefield. I would say a good 80% of them tap into toughness and sustainability in some meaningful way, and that's fine, because that's what this class is all about. 
There are some interesting skills like Heavyweight in Row 2 that increases your damage and improves damage reduction by 50% to specific enemies like Bulwarks, Crushers, and Plague Ogrins. While other skills are a bit more all-encompassing in nature, like Bullfighter, which speeds up the cooldown of Bull Rush by 10% for every elite enemy you or a Coherency ally kills. I also love that so many of the skills lean into Bull Rush, enhancing it for the player. We've seen this with some of the other skill trees, but the developers really make it a centerpiece for the Skullbreaker, especially later on in the tree. While some may not see it as a fundamental necessity of the class, it can be enhanced via the skills to become the cornerstone of an effective Skullbreaker. If it's not clear, the Skullbreaker belongs on the front lines, with an array of powerful weapons to unlock and a toolkit that screams Meat Shield. There's nothing better than having one of these Ogrens on your team taking fire and cutting down any enemies that get in the way. In terms of accessibility, this class is probably one of the most straightforward and fun to play. If you're new to Darktide, Ogrin is just simple. Swing a big beefy club, break out a shotgun when you want to change your pace, and charge through your enemies like the bull that you are. Because of all the defensive enhancements, it makes the Skullbreaker a bit more forgiving than, say, the veteran sharpshooter, who doesn't have quite the same level of sustain. So again, if you're new or just not that skilled, this class has a lot of built-in forgiveness. Don't get it twisted though, the Ogren Skullbreaker is a menace in the hands of a capable player, especially once some of the better weapons are unlocked, which is why it's a class I think everyone should explore at some point during their adventures. When it comes to picking the best starting class in Darktide, of course that's a non-question, as any class could be effective in the right hands. But to do this thing justice, I think we need to summarize the developer's intentions for each of the four launch classes. The veteran sharpshooter is meant to be a mid-range soldier that relies on ranged weapons to take down enemies, specifically elite and special enemies that they can target with their class ability and weak point enhancements. The zealot preacher is designed as a frontline warrior with an aptitude for living in the chaos, utilizing both melee and ranged weapons to great effect. Their special ability allows them to engage or disengage as the situation demands, and their ranged weapon gives them enough flexibility that they can make an impact even when they need to step away from the fight if only just for a second. The Ogren Skullbreaker, well, they are your true frontline tank. Big and beefy, their entire kit is designed around surviving the onslaught of enemies that will no doubt be rushing straight for them. They are the living embodiment of a meat shield. Finally, the Psyker Psykinetic, 40k's version of the Glass Cannon Mage. Their unique brain burst ability is the key to their high single target damage, but with that power comes a fragility that makes them a high skill ceiling character. The class is one of the most potent currently in the game, but it takes practice to make the most impact on the battlefield. In the coming days, we'll be releasing guides on all four of the starting classes, so keep it right here if you want more Darktide videos in your feed. Hopefully now you have a better understanding of the Ogren Skullbreaker. As always, friends, if you enjoy our content, do me a favor, hit that thumbs up, and consider subscribing. We'll be covering Darktide top to bottom, so don't miss out if you want more Warhammer 40k in your feeds. I'm also excited to announce that our first ever Legacy Gaming merch is now available. You can head to our website, legacygaming.gg shop to pick up shirts, hoodies, and a hat. The designs are pretty awesome and we'll be adding even more in the future. My name is Kodiak and from everyone here at Legacy Gaming, thanks for watching and play on.